And we're going to talk about the foot action. I always like going from the bottom up. Uh, just because quite often it's what you do with your feet that's going to make a big difference. And in particular, with rocking horse, there's a lot to do with what you do with your feet. Here we go. How you do the rocking horse will greatly impact the intensity of the exercise. And I'm always about technique. So let's start from the bottom up and work out what the feet are actually doing underneath the water. Now, when we do a rocking horse, I'm going to take the classic rocking horse position where we've got our arms going in and out to the sides and one leg's going forward and one leg's going to go back. So one leg forward, one leg back. So it's a movement that requires a bit of rebounding from one side to the other. And when we do a rocking horse, a lot of it is to do with what you do with your arms. But if we just look at the feet to start with, then we can appreciate that we're actually on our toes for the rocking horse. Now clearly the leg at the back has to drop down to the toe because you can't put your whole foot down. It's the front foot though, sometimes people will say put your heels down to the bottom of the pool. It changes the emphasis of the exercise. And what you will have noticed is that I just can't lift my front leg up as high when I land on my toe. Because I can't get a rebound, I can't get a fascial elastic reflex to be able to push off the bottom of the pool. That's why it's important that you indicate to your participants to make sure that they come down to their toes. They spring off the toes to go from one foot to the other. Now, some people might say, well, that's going to give you a calf. You need to put your heels down. Watch what happens when I put my heels down on both my feet. It's a lot more effort required to try and move the legs, but not in a good way. I was working really hard to not throw my head forwards because this would be what your regular participants may do to try to get the heels down and perform a rocking horse. doing there was using my head like a weight that's outside the water so it doesn't have the resistance to literally throw my body forwards and back. Not a great idea. So on your toes for the rocking horse. The point there is I think this, this conversation about being on your toes on your heels is just such a, it, it's in our industry, in our apple world and it's such a big topic. It keeps coming up again and again and again. Now there's times when it's appropriate to keep the heels down to one foot, and there's times when it's better for you to be up on, on your toes. And being able to identify which one is best for which exercise is really important. When you put your heels down to the bottom of the pool with a rocking horse, or you ask people to do that, they have to thrust their heads back and forwards to try and create the motion because you're asking them to press their heels down. Get in the pool and try that yourself. Now, if you're trying to avoid neck injury or exacerbating people with neck injuries, you know, and a lot of people do, neck, shoulder injuries, then please get them on their toes. Their toes and the fascia in their foot will allow them to spring back and forth without them thrusting forwards and back of the head. So that's number one. Number two, this belief system that unless you put your heels down to the bottom of the pool, you're going to get a cramp. That's not the case as long as you've got variety in the movement patterns that you do. So there's movement patterns that's best to put your heels down, and there's movement patterns that are best done on your toes. What you want to do is make sure that you've got a variety of those movement patterns. And when we did the jumping jack, there was times that putting your whole foot down to bottom pool was a better way to form the movement pattern from a muscular contraction point of view. Right, so we covered that up with the jumping jack. The rocking horse, it's definitely toes. 
Now, even though the front foot seemed like it was going down to the lower pool, pushing my heels down, I wasn't pushing my heels down, it just was landing a little bit closer, but I felt like I was springing off my toes from one foot to the other, right? That's really important. Now, of course, when you're devastating that pool deck, uh, no, you cannot do that. It's very hard for you to stay on your toes necessarily, depending on how agile you are. So I just want to go through that because not all of us have the best, have the best, you know, um, physical ability. That's one of the things I've definitely learned during COVID. And coming back out of COVID and now teaching my aqua classes, teaching my aqua classes, no matter how much I try and be involved, and I'm very involved when I teach my water classes, it's still not the same, it's still not the same um, physical effort that I get when I do um, other workouts, when I do workouts that are just for me, so that I stay fit as an instructor. That's really, really important to think about. But if you're not very agile, this is probably what you'll need to do. Lift the leg up, put your foot down, and take the leg back, lift the leg up, put your foot down, and take the leg back. And you probably will need to do it that slow and then ask people to move in the appropriate tempo. But if you are fitter, you are light on your feet, you can demonstrate on your toes, and in fact it feels better to do that because you'll have more spring, right? So you'll have more spring on your toes as an, as an aqua instructor if you demonstrate on your toes. Of course, if you have an aqua frame, you know, this is much easier to then demonstrate the leg action because you can hold your body weight up on the frame, right? But do indicate that they need to bounce up their toes. So they're going to bounce, 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 and it has this beautiful rebounding elastic effect that makes it feel a little bit less effortful. So it feels more effortless when they bounce on their toes to get from one leg to the other. Now, we are going to talk about where you're going to get the workout, but the workout doesn't come from what you do with your feet, okay? The, the feet are there to help you to perform the movement pattern.